The question about whether how to think about artificial intelligence and personhood and rights to artificial intelligence I think is really interesting. It's been teed up, I think, in two particularly good films. AI, which I really like, but many people don't. It was a Stanley Kubrick film that Steven Spielberg took over late in the process. And then Ex Machina more recently, which I think most people think was quite a good film. Uh, and I actually use these when I teach courses on the subject. And we ask the question, are the robots in these uh, films, are they persons, yes or no? One possibility is you say a necessary condition for being a person is being a human being. So many people are attracted to that argument and say only persons can be, only humans can be persons, right? All persons are humans. Uh, now, maybe not be that all humans are persons, but all persons are humans. Well, there's a problem with that, and this is put most forcefully by the philosopher Peter Singer, the bioethicist Peter Singer, who says uh, to reject uh, a species possibility that a species has rights and ought to be uh, a patient for moral consideration, the kind of things that have uh, moral consideration, on the basis of the mere fact that they're not a member of your species, he says, is equivalent morally to rejecting uh, giving rights or moral consideration to someone on the basis of their race. So he says speciesism equals racism, right? And the argument is, imagine that you encountered someone who is just like you in every possible respect, but it turned out uh, they actually were not a member of the human species, they were a Martian, let's say, or they were a robot, right, and truly exactly like you. Why would you be justified in giving them less moral regard? So people who believe in capacity X views have to at least be open to the possibility that artificial intelligence could have the relevant capacities, uh, albeit even though they're not human, and therefore qualify for personhood. On the other side of the continuum, one of the implications is that you might have members of the human species that aren't persons. And so anacephalic children, children with, born with uh, very little above the brain stem in terms of their brain structure, are often given as an example. They're clearly members of the human species, but their abilities to have the kinds of capacities most people think matter are relatively uh, few and far between. So you get into this uncomfortable position where you might be forced to recognize that some humans are non-persons and some non-humans are persons, right? Now again, if you take and bite the bullet and say, I'm willing to be a speciesist, being a member of the human uh, species is either necessary or sufficient for being a person, you avoid uh, this problem entirely. But if not, you at least have to be open to the possibility that uh, artificial intelligence in particular may at one point become person-like and have the rights uh, of persons. And I think that that scares a lot of people, but in reality, to me, when you look at the course of human history and look how willy-nilly we were in declaring some people non-persons from the law, slaves in this country, for example, it seems to me a little humility and a little openness to this idea may not be the worst thing in the world.